I'm here with Dr. Manu today and we're talking about what is going on in Iran and how it's affecting the rest of the world. In fact, in Australia just this year, there was a plot you were telling me about to attack an Australian Iranian family. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, What's on, on, on 14th of February, we all heard on the news and you can just search it on Guardian that there was a plot by the IRGC, Islamic regime that runs Iran right now, to attack an Iranian-Australian home in Australia. This plot was neutralized by ASIO, which is fantastic that they're you know, protecting the country and the people. But what if they miss one plot? What if the next plot is going to be on me? It's going to be on you. I think this, we haven't talked about this enough. When I talked to a couple of senators, from different states. A couple of them never ever heard about it. The week after, the senator of Australia and doesn't know about how we have almost been attacked. Yeah, I haven't heard about this either until you told me about this. This is news to me and it sounds like this is something that should be on, on the news. We should be hearing about this on the news, but instead it's gone it's quite quiet. People have been quiet on it. Did you think it's because there's fear there? Why do you think people are being so quiet about what's happening and the plots that are taking place? Honestly, I think the IRGC will do everything they can to quiet down people the same as me. So you stop talking, you stop telling others about it, so nobody will focus about the genocide they're doing in Iran. Now, we live in other countries. I lived in Australia for more than 10 years now. We are citizens here, we have rights. We know we can you know, talk freely about the things that are going on. We go meet with senators and MPs and politicians and maybe make little, little changes, and they're scared of that. The reason this has been quiet, I think, because it's, it's just... I don't know. I don't know what else is on the news. I think maybe is it not sexy enough? Is it not fun enough? Is it not important enough that, mm -hmm. you know, the, our, our politicians don't even know about it? And I have to email them and say, oh, by the way, re read this link. This is what happened in your own country last week. And then when you know about it, so the Home Affairs uh, Minister, Claire O'Neill, directly talked about this on the news and addressed Iran, which is not a common thing to address a country and say, you have been trying to attack us. But what was the ramification after that? What did the government do? Nothing. They placed some flimsy, pitiful sanctions on some very low-level members of IRGC, like morality police. It just looks like they're doing something to appear like they're doing something when really they're not actually attacking the root cause and they're not addressing the bigger issue here. Do you know people who are personally on death row as well in Iran? I do. Uh, one of my friends in Sydney who have been very active about this whole situation, uh, organized rallies and everything, Mohammed, his cousin in Iran is on death row any day, any moment now, unfortunately. And a couple of our politicians spoke up about it, which is fantastic. A couple of our senators and MPs spoke up about it and condemned this which is amazing. But listen, up to a certain extent, we can condemn. What are we waiting for? What is this government waiting for? They attack our families back home, kidnap them, threaten them, try to kill them, almost kill them, or they already have executed many people who had family members overseas due to, uh, they said you're spying for them. But mm. on the other hand, what did our government do? Absolutely nothing. Every now and then they come up with some other pitiful sanctions that affect nothing. And when I talk to them, when I talk to some of the politicians who are kind enough to give me the time and talk to me, they say, yeah, but you know, we don't really have any uh, relationship with Iran. Then why not cut the rest? Whatever relationship you have, cut it. I asked one of the MPs of a Labour government, how come you put Hamas and Hezbollah on a terrorist list, but you refuse to do IRGC? And their answer was, oh yeah, but Hamas and Hezbollah have no power. So you would only work against the ones who are weak. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, yeah. There's no backbone there to actually go ahead and do something. So what, as a populace, as a people in Australia, and I've also got an audience in the USA, I've also got a large audience in Iran, what can people do? There's that classic saying that people have the power. What can the people do in this situation? What can we ask people on social media to do in this position to help the people of Iran and to help people even being targeted outside of Iran? Like you said, we've had people, homes here being targeted. What can we do? This has started this revolution or these protests started in Iran and then the government brutally attacked back and killed and raped and did 
unthinkable things to children and women and men. I'm asking you to be smart. This attack almost happened on Australian soil. This is about them attacking us here in Australia and our government doing absolutely nothing. So what can we do? It's funny, whoever we met, we met with the uh, shadow minister for home affairs, you know, we met with a couple of senators of Victoria, Tasmania, other places, and also everybody who could met with their MPs, their answer is the same. They always say, whether they're from a uh, Labour government or Liberal or Greens, they say public pressure. We don't have that. They need emails and they need phone calls. And it's so easy. With my own MP, I emailed a couple of times and said, can I meet with you? And I didn't get a response. I called once and they gave me a meeting. It's so easy to just pick up the phone, find your MP online and just ask them, what have you done about this plot? I'm worried about my children. I'm worried about myself. Why do we in Australia still have a connection with IRGC? What is the point? There is no economical benefit from them. The opposition, which is the Liberal Party, have said, publicly we will not stop you we will not cause any problems if you want to go ahead and put uh, IRGC on a terrorist list the attorney general's response was yeah but our criminal code doesn't allow us so what is your job your job in a parliament is to change the law to benefit the people yeah so people need to call their MPs their local MPs they need to put pressure on the government There'll be a link in my bio that you can click on and hopefully we'll see some more pressure being put on, on people in power, people that can actually make these decisions who clearly at the moment aren't listening or are coming up with bizarre and soft excuses. It almost seems very corrupt. That's and I hate to throw that word around, but it sounds very corrupt what's going on. That's very true. In, in America, if you just Google, there have been an Iranian American who worked against IRGC for a very long time. She was almost she was almost kidnapped by IRGC forces. FBI got involved. They got in prison. Stuff like that. Like really big. So what 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 are we waiting for? So finally we're like, yeah, you know, they did this and it killed that many people. So now we finally can put them on a list. They are terrorists. We know that. They know that. They just they don't want to call them that because they're scared because they're too powerful. Well, I don't know why they're giving them so much power. Why? why this has gone so quiet as well because th this is a revolution what's going on the people in iran have been protesting they've been speaking up people have heard and yet the government is still being weak we've got to put pressure on the local mps whether you're in australia whether you're in america call your local governments call your local politicians send letters send emails speak up before something like dr manu says catastrophic happens because we can't just sit around and wait for something like that to happen Dr. Manu, thank you so much for sitting with me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming in and thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you. It's an, it's an honour. It's an honour to sit here with you.